The Yoruba Tennis Club has held the 2017 annual lecture with the theme The Traditional Institution in the Modern Nigerian Society, which took place at the Greetings Hall of the Yoruba Tennis Club on Thursday, 30th of March 2017. The prestigious lecture, which was delivered by the Obio Furniture, His Royal Highness Nemeka Alfred Uguchuku Achebe, CFR, began with prayers and breaking of colonnade performed by His Majesty the Obi of Onisha, who quickly passed the colonnade to 93-year-old Chief Folari Kuka, a former chairman and trustee of the Yoruba Tennis Club, who prayed specially for the success of the event, capping the exercise with a glorious song in Yoruba language. <laughs> In attendance at the event were the chairman of the Yoruba Tennis Club, Brother Ayodele Martins, the vice chairman, Professor Adetokumbo Fabanwo, trustees of the Yoruba Tennis Club, past chairman, led by the chairman of the board of trustees, Alahaji Olufemi Latifo Kunu, members of the Yoruba Tennis Club, who turned out in white traditional garbs with either the club's cap or the anniversary cap, were hugely complimented by their wives, as well as friends of the club from different parts of the world. On the part of the distinguished guest lecturer, the revered Ubi of Onicha Agbogidi, His Royal Majesty, Nemeka Alfred Achebe CFR, he was accompanied by a rich retinue of his high chiefs, including Chief Dr. Obiora, former military governor of Lagos State, Royal Admiral Dubisi Kano retired, the chairman of Seplet's Oil in Nigeria, Dr. ABC Ojako, who was the special guest of honor, was represented by Chief Agunze Koku. Ulurugu Moses Tiger, president of Urobo Progressive Union, was joined by others like engineer Vincent Maduka, former DG of NTA, and his wife, Mrs. Maduka, who is the current president of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. In his opening remarks, the chairman of the Yoruba Tennis Club, an accomplished lawyer and fine administrator, Brother Ayodele Martins, went into how and why the Yoruba Tennis Club, a sports and recreation club, was founded as far back as 15 September 1926. The Yoruba Tennis Club, he stated, served as a positive force to stabilize unity and as a direct response to neutralize the antics of the whites who segregated non-whites, including Nigerians, from the tennis club, the only tennis club that existed at that time. Brother Ayodele Martins, the chairman of the Yoruba Tennis Club, said, The choice of the Obi of Anisha to deliver the lecture with the theme, the traditional institution in the modern Nigerian society, is very apt, given his scholarly disposition and impressive antecedents, solid pedigree and great strides, in giving the monarchy in these parts a most dignified respect. The chairman of the Yoruba Tennis Club, Brother Ayodele Martins, also told the distinguished gathering that the Yoruba Tennis Club maintains a non-partisan posture in matters of politics, but said members are free to express themselves as far as which side of the political divide they prefer to swing to. The Yoruba Tennis Club for our visitors is a sports and social private members club founded on 15 September 1926 in Lagos. When founded, it created a venue for Nigerians, regardless of origin, to play tennis and socialize. Since at that time, they were excluded from the then European Tennis Club, which is now known as the Lagos Long Tennis Club. The aim and objectives of the club include encouraging all kinds of sports, particularly the game of long tennis amongst its members and the public. 
The citation of the guest lecturer, the OB of Onisha, His Royal Majesty, Nemeka Achebe Siefar, was read before he delivered the lecture. He was born in Onisha on 14th May 1941. He became the 21st OB of Onisha, having been installed on 14th of May 2002. The OB of Onisha studied chemistry at Stanford University, California, USA and management at Columbia University, New York, where he bagged his master's degree. The OB is an alumnus of the National Institute of Policy and Strategic Studies, Kuru Joss Plateau State. He held several top-level managerial positions in his 30 years career with the Shell Group of Companies. The OB of Onisha served as chairman of Universal Insurance Limited, OMAC Maritime Limited, he was chairman of Diamond Bank PLC from January 2007 to December 2014, having been a director in the bank in 2005. The obese, very rich resume shows that he has been a director of Unilever Nigeria PLC since March 2003, before his elevation to the position of chairman, a position he currently occupies. The Obi of Onisha served as an executive director of Shell Petroleum Development Company from 1988 to 1996. He is chairman of the Committee on Environment and Natural Resource Management Committee Reforms. The Obi is the chairman, Anambra State Traditional Rulers Council, and chancellor of both Kogi State University and Amadu Bello University. He holds an honorary doctorate degree from Manambra State University. He is an honorary fellow of the Nwafoy Rizu College of Education. The Obi of Onisha, His Royal Highness, Nemeka Afedu Guchuku Achebe Siefar, believes that the Igbos can restore their glory and pride by keeping abreast with change without losing their rich cultural identity. In the lecture themed the traditional institution in the modern Nigerian society, the Obi of Onisha started by commending the officers and members of the Yoruba Tennis Club for the invitation extended to him to deliver the lecture and considering him fit to join the very rich ranks of distinguished Nigerians from different spheres of life who had delivered the prestigious lecture of the Yoruba Tennis Club in the past. He commended the members for using an auspicious platform like that to help explore and prefer solutions to issues that will contribute to the growth of society. I wholeheartedly commend your tradition of exploring issues of the moment as a continuation to the improvement of the society in which we all live in. I thank you also for the freedom to choose my topic for this lecture. I've naturally chosen one that I consider not only relevant and current, but also I feel at home with. And I trust that I will rise up to your expectations. In today's exercise, I will look at the evolution and the relevance of our traditional institution represented by our monarchy from the colonial times to the present time. Myself, being a key player at the helm of that institution, you can probably guess where my story is heading. According to His Royal Majesty, Nemeka Alfred Achebe CFR, tradition is a myth which we all live with. The evolution and its relevance from colonial time to present is represented by the monarchy. He stated that traditional institutions include chief's council, titled men and women, spiritual head, diviners and the age-grade societies. Tradition encapsulates the accepted norms and beliefs of the people. The institution is composed of everyone in the society. Before colonialism, Nigerian traditional communities were variously organized as empires, or your, for instance, as kingdoms, as city-states, and autonomous communities, with sovereign monarchs as the political, military, and sometimes even religious authorities. These monarchs, now commonly referred to 
as traditional rulers, were the first points of contact for the colonial agents when they came on uh, into the community. You know, Nietzsche, um, the first ones that arrived were the religious, uh, the Anglican mission led by uh, a giant crowd. And they were promptly arrested by the community and taken to the palace. It was the king that decided that they should be allowed to carry on with the spread of Christianity. He said, to many, tradition can just the impression of antiquity, something ancient and never changing. Indeed, traditional rulers and the institution's heads are custodians of our culture, which have been handed down by our ancestors. The custodians who are first point of contact are the agents of change. The traditional governance system did not accord the others the similar enormous powers wielded in the north, including, for instance, the authority to impose taxes. So the judgment as to the level of success of the whole principle of indirect rule is therefore merely relative, even in northern Nigeria, where the ruling aristocracy entrenched its domination over the others, particularly in the largely non-Muslim areas of the Middle Belt and Southern Kaduna. And I think that some of the problems and challenges we have today, particularly in the North, are still the fallback uh, from all of this uh, uh, impact of indirect rule. The OB went on to commend the outspokenness and the likes of the Sultan of Sokoto, the Oba of Lagos, the Emir of Kano, the Alake of Egbaland, and many others who have made it a point of duty to preach on moral correctness, becoming advocates and voice of the voiceless, and speaking boldly on matters that border on national unity. He said the traditional institution is a development catalyst and mobilization for policy implementation, monitoring, reviews, and growth acceleration. Some of the generation of traditional rulers who bore the brunt of the onslaught of the military regimes included the following Ubi Alphonse of Kabwe, Ufalo of Kabwe, Ubi of Onicha, Opa Okurade Sijuade Oni of Ife, Large Ado Bayeru, Emir of Kano. And at some point, there was an attempt even to seize the passport of Oni of Ife. And, uh, Emir of Lagos for, for traveling overseas without clearance. Opa Sikiro Adetona, Awujade of Egyptland. Opa Adeyinka Oyeko, Opa of Lagos. Elijah Muhammad Machipo, the Sultan of Sokoto. Opa Adeyemi, Adeyemi, the third, Alafi of Oyo. Opa Eredjawa, the first, Opa of Benin. Ogiame Eredjawa, second, the second, Ulu of Wari. Opa, Oyeba De Lipede, Alake of Ebaland, and many, many other of their colleagues. To summarize his lecture, he said so far, he has outlined the changes in the fortune of the Nigerian traditional institution from colonial times to present. His Royal Majesty, Nemeka Achebe, said, the institution has successfully reinvented and renewed itself. At every critical period, running fast enough to stand still. He said there is need for a constitutional amendment as it affects the traditional institution. The constitution should enshrine the non-involvement of traditional rulers in partisan politics, as has been recommended by the National Council of Traditional Rulers of Nigeria to the National Assembly. On the other hand, the constitution should also adequately protect the traditional institution from the undue meddling and interference by political elites and the money class. So on one hand, keep them out of politics, partisan politics. On the other hand, also protect them. Furthermore, the constitution should create a national council of traditional rulers at the federal level as a forum where traditional rulers representatives from all parts of the country can meet regularly to deliberate on major national issues and to provide advice to the federal government. Could you imagine if 
if all the traditional rulers or their representatives from all parts of the country with one voice recommend to the federal government let's do this on this issue any issue you know uh, cattle health spend crisis or whatever it is all the traditional rulers or their representatives at the national level take a common view that must be a powerful view the interactive session was next as questions were asked based on the topic the traditional institution in the modern Nigerian society. The event also threw up interesting insights by the Chairman Board of Trustees of the Yoruba Tennis Club, Alhaji Latif Ulufemi Okunu, CON, SEN. He appreciated the topic, the traditional institution in the modern Nigerian society, and appreciated the Obiovonicha for the topic well researched and excellently tailored. He also said monarchy should not be regularized by any constitution. Instead, it should be a watchword to the constitution. Al Haji Okunu stressed that putting the monarchy under the constitution simply means killing the institution of monarchy in Nigeria. He congratulated members of the Yoruba Tennis Club and other members that featured in the process of making the occasion a success and for featuring a highly respected personality, His Royal Majesty, Nemeka Achebe, the Obi of Onicha. Today, we have too many of us who are mere badness. And you know in Yoruba land, a badness is a keeper look after my farmland for me. That was a badness. So all the ballets now are now His Royal Majesty the Upper of Mangeke, His Royal Majesty of Mush Mushi, His Royal Majesty of all of all the areas now have Royal Majesties. That is killing the institution of Popers. The appreciation and presentation of plaques to the guest lecturer, Royal Father of the Day, guest of honor, and two others quickly followed. Elders, brethren, and sisters, it gives me immense pleasure to present this plaque to Igwe Inaemeka Alfred Achebe, CFR MNI, and Gogidi, the OB of Venetia in appreciation of his delivery of the lecture titled The Traditional Institution in the Modern Nigerian Society this 30th day of March 2017. Congratulations and thank you very much. In the vote of thanks, the Vice Chair, Professor Adeto Kumbo Fabangwo, thanked everyone for their massive turnout and prayed God to grant all journey messes to their various destinations. Today has been a day of a historic handshake across the Niger. We want to thank you for your presence. We want to thank you for gracing the occasion. I'd like to thank our Rivan trustees who are here. I've already thanked our trustee who doubled as chairman of the occasion. Elijah Latif Mokuno, to all our other invitees as well as attendees, I want to thank you for coming. Please fill the attendance register before you leave and drop your contact details because we would like to invite you again for events of this nature in the future.